I need some specifics. You gave me the white cop thing. What else? Give me another example where you think is a problem. Well, well, uh, as a black conservative, tell me how do no, no, you, you how do you, you get people to come around? You're, you're the one who yeah. made the assertion that you yeah. think racism remains a major problem in America. I asked you to give me an example. You gave me white cops going after blacks. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hold it up very well. What's the other argument you have? In this video, we are going to watch the interview that potentially made Dave Rubin a conservative. When, under the unbearable weight of facts and logic, and whilst being beaten from pillar to post, in this debate, the truth all of a sudden became too much for him. And he realized, I think I'm on the wrong side of this argument. And the man who did this to him was none other than the man who should be governor of California right now, Larry Elder. Let's get into the clips. But you wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as a as an institution, that it just, in a certain amount of it just exists. 2015? I, it, that give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that in general, cops have, are, that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black what's your data than for, white. What's your basis for saying that? L last year- the, Well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, uh, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year, per year last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody uh, and, and, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? So that, there's where you would say that this is purely because of social justice. This Pure, is purely because, because of, they want ultimately for people to be angry enough to just keep voting Democrat. That's right, that, and, that and where's, where's the evidence of a lack of social justice? When a black uh, suspect is killed by, by a cop, Believe me, the media's on it, people are watching it, uh, and, uh, and justice will, will, for the most part, occur. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat. The majority of city council is black. The top cop at the time was, was black. The number two cop was black. The majority of the command staff is black. The, the mayor is black. Uh, the AG is black. Uh, and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. Absurd. So it's funny, I find myself caught in between this a little bit as a liberal where I want to always try to defend the other. So in this case, the other being black people, I, I'm always sympathetic to that. And that, uh, yeah, yeah, at the same time, I hear you laying out a pretty solid well, case. Well, these are just the facts. I'll tell you something else too. There was just a study, um, uh, University of Washington, uh, and it turns out cops were more reluctant, more hesitant to pull the trigger against a black, black suspect than a white suspect. Uh, probably because of the fear of being accused of racially profiling and the fear that the civil rights establishment was going to come down on him. So if anything, uh, whites are more likely to be shot by a cop under, under certain circumstances than a, than, a, uh, than a black person. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75%. However, the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined. Yeah. And so if anything, people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist. And almost all, every one of these incidents, whether it's Eric Gardner in, in New York, who died because he was selling Lucy's and resisted arrest, whether it's Tamir Rice in Cleveland, who was twirling around the gun, whether it's Michael Brown in Ferguson, uh, who had just uh, committed a ar strong arm robbery, almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest. 
why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled over, have my hand at 10 o'clock, have my hand at two o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in order. And if I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Obama and the whole group of them told black people to do that, we'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Larry Elder just makes too much sense, guys. And before we watch him absolutely eviscerate poor little lib version of Dave Rubin, I want to make a point about police brutality. This seems to me to be another one of those common sense ideas that's become some highly politicized debate. There is a certain way in which you must conduct yourself when you are confronted by police that is universal, no matter what color your skin or no matter what country you're in. And believe me guys, I've traveled to many countries and I have found myself in some very prickly situations with various law enforcements in various strange countries but those stories are for my travel channel. So check that out in the top of the comments. But generally speaking, you must defer authority at that time to the individual with the badge in the hope, of course, that they are doing their job in good faith. And after the fact, you can contest it by going down the official and appropriate avenues, unless you're being framed in the back ass of nowhere in Colombia. But that's for a different video. But nowadays we're seeing this strange notion where due purely to the vilification of the police in the media, people are filming their encounters with police and hoping to get some viral moment where they can claim to be a victim of racism. Because obviously people will do absolutely anything for attention these days, but this is so dangerous. And I've seen a lot of these videos. If you spend enough time on Twitter, you will see them where people are resisting arrest and sometimes it gets violent and sometimes it ends up fatal. And then the same thing happens over and over again. The media grabs hold of the story and then it becomes a big race narrative. And then you get all of the activists saying, well, Oh, he should have just shot him in the leg or he should have just got him in a choke hole. No, sorry, I disagree. If you put yourself in that situation, you have to understand that you are putting your own life at risk. Even if you have a knife and the police officer has a gun, if I'm a cop, I'm not taking any chances because if I slip up and if I do the wrong thing and if they catch me with the knife and they hit an artery, I'm dead. Sorry, not taking that chance. Play stupid games, get stupid consequences. Now back to the debate and let's watch Larry Elder make Dave squirm. But before we get into this guys, if you do enjoy watching these debates, then make sure to chuck a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. Helps me enormously with my YouTube algorithms. Let's get into it. Yeah, all right, so I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm hearing a lot of what you're saying here. So as a black conservative then, who now you've, you've laid out your case there, but you haven't laid out yours. I, so, asked, I asked you to name the most important uh, example of racism, and you gave white cops going after black people. And I, and I told you, gave you the facts for that. So that's nonsense. So what, you must have something else. What else is it? If you think racism well, remains a problem in America, give it to well, me. Well, I think it remains a problem. Give it to it's me. Not, it's give it not, to me. It may not be systemic in that we have, it's not like you're not being hired because you're black, there's no systemic reason, you know, legal reason that that exists, that kind of thing. But I think that racism as a general uh, I need some. Theory I need exists. some. I need some specifics. Uh, you gave me the white cop thing. What else? Give me another example. What do you think is a problem? Well, well, uh, as a black conservative, tell me how do no, no, you, you how do you, you get people to you're, come around? You're, you're the one who yeah. made the assertion that you yeah. think racism remains a major problem in America. I asked you to give me an example. You gave me white cops going after blacks. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hold it up very well. What's the other argument you have? What, what, what's the other thing? Well, I don't know that it's systemic in that in the sort of macro sense. I'm not, I'm not mad. I, I, yeah, I, no, no, no. I just want to know what, what it is you're, you're talking no, about. No, no, so I, that, can, that's we exactly what that's. Yeah. Well, believe me, that's 100 percent what I wanted to have you. Blacks here. are not getting into school. BS. We have a race. We have affirmative action. So a black person with a with an SAT and a GPA uh, of of X will will get into a school faster and easier than a white person with an SAT uh, or a GPA of X. And if going to going to school is a route to the middle class, you can make an argument that blacks have an easier route to, middle, to the middle class. If you're talking about uh, black, uh, b about poverty, um, the poorer you are, the more accessible loans and grants are for you. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, mm -hmm. is the percentage of blacks, 75% of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, 
I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. So, so the family stuff, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow your logic there. Mm -hmm. On the family stuff, what, what can actually be done about that then? I mean, what, because that's, reverse, a, that's a big re Reverse list. the welfare state. Uh, in um, 1890, 1900, you look at census reports, a black kid, believe it or not, was slightly more likely to be born to a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Even during slavery, uh, a black kid was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father than today. What's happened is we launched this so-called war on poverty in the 60s, where literally Lyndon Johnson sent people walk, knocking on doors. I, I, I lived in the 60s, and people knocked on doors, apprising women of their availability to welfare, provided there was no man in the house. Uh, and we went from 25% of blacks being born outside of wedlock in 65 to 75% right now. And you look at how much money that we spent on welfare, uh, and the lines are parallel. It was a neutron bomb dropped on this country, not just in the black community, but on people in general. Uh, at one time, only about 5% of whites were born outside of wedlock. Now 25% of whites are born outside of wedlock. I was in college in 1970, and there was a report called the Moynihan Report, uh, the Negro Family, a Case for National Action. It was written by a liberal, by a man who became uh, a Democratic senator for the, from, from New York. And at the time, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. He said, my God, this number is, is horrific. If we don't do something about it, it could get even higher. Well, fast forward, 25% of white kids are now born outside of wedlock. It is the number one problem in this country. And what we've done, in my opinion, is we've economically incentivized women to marry the government. and We've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. Larry Elder just verbally beat the lib out of Dave Rubin. That was so brutal, but so necessary. And what a perfect example of a white lib trying to explain to a red-pilled black man that racism is a huge problem in America. The America that had a black president for eight years, and then obviously, when he's asked to explain why, completely falls over himself, because you just don't come at Larry Elder like that. It was genuinely like watching poetry in motion. And you can just imagine that Dave Rubin went back to his dressing room after this and was just like, holy shit, I really might have to switch it up here. I can't keep coming at these conservatives who have all this facts and logic and expect to get away with it. I can't hide behind the young Turks anymore. Maybe racism isn't such a big problem and maybe these conservatives are actually right. Are we the baddies? And he made a fantastic decision and did what most libs won't do, which is they won't just accept that they are wrong about these issues and he took the red pill and he came over to the good side so massive shout outs to dave rubin for that and what a great effect it's had on him i mean in this video he looks like a beta 13 year old lib with a little baby face and stupid spiky hair and since taking the red pill he's become more and more of a masculine chad with the help of larry elder Dave Rubin became a man that day. This debate for Dave Rubin was akin to the coming of age ceremony of the Pentecost tribe in Vanuatu. An ancient tribal ceremony where a young boy must show his masculine merit by enduring the pain and suffering and turning over to the truth. So big ups to Larry Elder there for being the father to Dave Rubin that so many young boys are lacking in their households today. And with that guys, as usual, hit the link in the top of the comments to catch me on my other channels and pin in the bio. And if you guys wanna watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake, this is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.